Welcome to Yemin Moshe and Mishkanot Shananim. I know that it's a horrible, horrible name to remember, but you will, you know that that uh, that neighborhood. If you are visiting at the old city, at least with me, look how beautiful it is. It's one of the first neighborhoods, Jewish neighborhoods, outside the walls. But I'm thinking about that, and don't, 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 don't go away because the view is such an amazing view. The sun will be in our eyes, but that's life. But I can give you a hint of what we are looking at. But you can hear the birds. The birds are singing. To be here, it's the best time is um, afternoon, when the sun is behind you. And now you can actually see what I'm looking at. A windmill. Montefiore, Sir Montefiore windmill. And when he actually established it, when he built it in 1850, uh, 1858, it looks like that. As you can see, this is the windmill. They started to, to build the neighborhood, but when he built the windmill, that wasn't here. And you can see the old city. Remember those two buildings, at least that one, and you will recognize where are you now. Then he built it for, uh, um, it's like a source of livinghood for the settlers of Mishkanot Chananim, the neighborhood that he will actually build. He actually think, thought about work before he built the, the neighborhood. And he had two reasons for that. First of all, the Jews had to move out of the old city. It was too, um, too uh, expensive. It was very polluted, lots of diseases. Um, the um, Arabs, some of them treat the Jews in a good way, but not all of them. Then he had to find himself a better place. He bought that land for them. And the first thing that he built was the windmill. Um, Netherlands, it's not yours. It's actually British. Um, the stone. Is Jerusalem stone, and this is by law. Um, but the, you know, all the equipment are for Canterbury, Britain. Look how beautiful it is, and it actually functioned for 20 years, almost 20 years. Although there were a lot of problems here. For example, um, it's the first one, and no one can maintain it. The second reason: the Arabs were afraid to sell their wheat to the Jews, then he had to find a lot of sauce for that. Um, by the way, even the time, it's an excellent place for wine. I mean, to drink wine in front of the city, it's beautiful in front of the old city. Really beautiful. Now, let's look at that and say goodbye to Montefiore Windmill. Today it's a museum. You can actually enter there uh, to see the history of it. Look how beautiful is that neighborhood. Now that neighborhood was on the border of, uh, between Israel and Jordan until 1967. Wait, wait, Jordan, not Palestine? Palestine never existed as a country because the Jordanian occupied future Palestine in 1948. They also uh, occupied the old city that you can see in front of you uh, for the same reason, to rule that area. Then the border between Israel and Jordan was right here. And those houses been damaged. A lot, a lot of people actually died because of uh, the Jordanians here. Then it was like a slums area. Slowly, slowly, people actually left that neighborhood and lucky, lucky people, some other people bought it for almost nothing and now it's such an, an expensive neighborhood. I think it's the uh, most expensive neighborhood in Jerusalem. That one we can see here. The German colony is right there. What you can see in front of you, this is a church, this is a Scottish church and a guest house. You can imagine how beautiful it is to drink coffee while you are uh, sorry, 
wine while you're standing uh, on top of the tower um, watching the view. And the British built here an eye uh, hospital, St. John Hospital. Today it's a beautiful um, uh, boutique hotel. And you can see the Kidron Valley and the beginning of the Judean Desert right there. Uh, and uh, can you see the emptiness behind that mountain? This is Jordan, the country of today. And in between is the Valley of the Dead Sea, uh, the Jordan Valley, the Jordan River. Uh, that's the Dead Sea there. And if you're talking about Bethlehem, just beyond the green area, it's Bethlehem, which belongs now to the Palestinian Authority. What we can see here, Montefiore built those houses like a fortress because the Jews were afraid to leave the old city and to move to here. From day one, the mothers told the children, oh, if you will uh, leave the city, the lions will eat you alive. Uh, robbers, rapers, then don't do that. Then at the beginning, people actually entered the those houses and um, at nighttime, they moved back to the, um, to the old city. In each building here, you can find a kitchen and a toilet indoors. This is something special. Remember that building that I told you to look at? This is the um, Protestant Academy and, and Greek Orthodox um, um, kind of academy school. Above it, at Mount Zion, you can see the Dormition Church. You can see that beautiful pyramid top church. And oh, what happened to the? What happened to the? Wait a minute! 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 The sun is in my eyes as well. Then it's difficult for me to see. But now you can see the pyramid house, the pyramid church, and the tower of the church, uh, the bell towers. This is the Dormition Church. Uh, this is the house of Mary, that's where she fell asleep. At that place you can find the room of the Last Supper, the tomb of, uh, um, of King David, the, the tomb of Oscar Schindler. It's such a beautiful place to visit, Mount Zion. And the walls that you see there, it's from the 16th century built by um, the um, um, Sultan, the Ottoman Sultan right in front of you and i'm not sure that you can see jaffa gate i think you will be recognized it with the tower of the minaret aha now you can you will be able to see it here it is here it is this is jaffa gate one of the eight gates of jerusalem and the minaret is of a fortress that king herod and actually everyone who occupied the city used as their fortress because it's the highest place of the old city Jewish quarter, Armenian quarter is right there. To the left of Jaffa Gate is uh, the Christian quarter. And the biggest quarter, the biggest neighborhood is of the Muslims. Then this is the western wall of the city, not of the Jewish temple. Beautiful, isn't it? Last thing before I will ask you, uh, before we will say goodbye. Um, yeah, I do have something else, but before that, if you love that kind of videos, I do have more than 20,000 videos, please subscribe to my channel. You can ask me whatever you want. That is, that is, that valley is. Before I will tell you that, if you want to support me, you can via PayPal and, and, and uh, buy me a coffee, which is at the descriptions of that video, then that is not less than Hell Valley. <gasps> Hell Valley is right in front of you. Ba -ba -bam. Hell Valley is right in front of you at the time of Abraham. The Canaanite people used to sacrifice their firstborn son right there. Then the story of Abraham and Isaac is not a unique story at that time. Here it is, the tomb of, oh, you can hear the bells now. This is the bells of the Dormition Church, the House of Mary. Um, a very important tomb is there at Hakeldama, and that's the tomb of, the tomb of Judas. Now, let's say goodbye now, 
And if you like that kind of video, please subscribe to my channel. I want to be your part of your family. Thank you very much for being with me. Bye-bye.